if I could put this on YouTube if I keep your face out of it. Oh, that's fine. That's okay? All right. So my client is seven months pregnant, and I saw her long, long time ago for right SIJD, and um, she had um, torn labrum in the right hip, had two surgeries, um, and she feels SIJD on both sides, also gets some lumbar stiffness and does some self-adjustments that, um, that helps relieve her pain. And today she, she is the first day I've seen her in a very long time. And um, she has good mobility throughout the pelvis, um, except that she does not rotate forward on the left ilium. Comparing this side, you can see that I can push to a stop point and I can get some spring mobility through through the pelvis on the right. Okay? I can induce superior glide on this side and then on this side I cannot get superior glide. The sacrotuberous ligament comes off the bottom of the sacrum, goes obliquely to the medial aspect of the sit bone the ischial tuberosity. So you walk across and there it is right there, that's a distinct ligament and I can indent that with my thumb and on this side that ligament is very tight. It feels like bone. Okay? So one theory is that this is, S, this is SI joint movement. Um, another theory is that the whole pelvis is twisted in a manner that makes it act as though the left ilium rotated backwards. And um, so if it's, if it's an ilium rotation, then this left ilium is rotated backwards and that would in fact stretch that sacrotuberous ligament, okay? Otherwise the whole pelvis might be twisted on the hip, on the hip bones, or maybe a combination of both. The treatment is uh, very straightforward and I'll demonstrate that and then hopefully your husband can help you with that um, and then I'll also show you a, a, a way to self-treat that pattern mm -hmm. okay so today the only thing that I see is a left posterior ilium I don't see anything going on on the right side okay. so I might not have a full picture because you tell me that you adjust the right side mm -hmm. so I don't know exactly what it does um, but maybe by the next time I see you, maybe we'll have that figured out. But let's have you sit up and face towards me. And it's pretty rare that I treat someone who's pregnant, so I appreciate this opportunity. So it's very possible that with the pelvis being asymmetrical, it's very possible that when she sits, maybe it takes the sacrum into a torsional pattern. Um, so we'll see. And I can see that this left PSIS is more posterior towards me and more inferior. Alright, so I'm on the top of the sacrum and I'm just springing with my thumb and the force goes through that joint, goes through the SI joint, through the lumbar, lower lumbar sacral joint and moves. And then down here, this left thumb is posterior towards me. I can spring on the right side and when I try and spring on the left, it does not spring, mm -hmm. okay? So you do have what I would call an induced torsion, but probably the driver is the ilium, okay? And I'm gonna lift up towards your right ear, and I'm trying to lift up on this left side and there's no upward spring. And in fact, your left ILA is lower, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have an induced torsion of the sacrum from the ilium being rotated. So let's have you lay on your right side and we'll treat the ilium and I'll, and I'll teach your husband how to assist you with that. So when you're lying sideways like this, there's very little weight on your left SI joint. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever this ilium, this hemipelvis weighs, you know, that's what's the amount of weight going through the SI joint. So it's a very simple correction. Okay. All right. So most women have enough flexibility in their hip that I can flex their hip 90 degrees without any further rotation backwards of the pelvis. Mm -hmm. Some males are pretty tight and I would treat some males in about 70 degrees of hip flexion, okay. but 
um, I'm able to get 90 degrees with you and I'm lifting the knee up so your thigh is parallel to the table. Okay. okay. I come up here with my left hand and I find the ilium. Okay, I find the top of the back part of the ilium. I call that the posterior iliac shelf. And I just pull it forward there all the way. And then I push all the way into your thigh. My left elbow is extended. So we have a force couple here. So all I have to do is push with my stomach, pushing the lower part of your pelvis backwards. Okay? Mm -hmm. And 10 times should do it. Okay, and let's prop the pillows and get you on your stomach again. So now I can take up the slack there. Mm -hmm. I can now spring the left ilium forward, okay? And when I get under the sit bone, now I can spring it upward. There's force translation that goes through the SI into the lumbar, all the way up your back because I see your head bob up and down when I mm -hmm. spring it, okay? Mm -hmm. So now I'm testing sacrotuberous ligament and this is now a little bit softer, I can now spring that ligament, whereas I could not do that before. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you free up movement on one side, sometimes the other side then gets locked. Okay. So if the right ilium was rotated forward, called an anterior ilium, then we would have blocked motion going inferiorly. But we have good motion there. I see your heel bob up and down. But nonetheless, what I want to do is I want to teach you how to treat the right side for a possible anterior ilium. Okay. Okay? So let's have you lie on your back. Now when I looked at you earlier, mm. when you were on your back, the right ASIS, that bump on the pelvis in mm -hmm. the front, was more forward towards mm -hmm. the ceiling, and it was lower towards your feet. And it's a lot straighter now. Okay. It, mm -hmm. It's subtle. It's too subtle. It's a little. It's a little bit lower now. Okay. But you have good posterior rotation movement. Nonetheless, I would have you hug your right knee. Yeah, bend the knee, hug it outside the right shoulder. And I would do that every day for two minutes. Okay. And that will keep posterior mobility on the right side. Okay. All right? Mm hmm Now, because you have good mobility in all directions now, I think your pelvis has a developmental asymmetry. So what I want to do is look at you in sitting. Okay. okay. So go ahead and step down. And I'm first going to teach you the self-treatment for posterior ilium. So I'm going to lay on this table now. So the self-correction for left posterior ilium is that you back up to your bed sideways. Mm -hmm. So you just sit down on the edge of the bed and you bring your feet up on the bed. Then you bring both feet over to the right and your pelvis follows a little bit and that's fine. Okay? And then what I do is I let the left leg hang downward. My knee's bent 90 degrees. And naturally it's a little bit suspended. Okay? But over the period of two minutes, it might release. You might get little ratcheting releases. Okay? Okay. So the only thing I'm doing is I'm holding the leg in. 
at about a 20 degree angle. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that fairly captures the angle of the SI joint and pulls ilium in a anterior rotation direction. Okay. Okay? So I would do this every day for two minutes. Okay. Okay? Very good. Um, I lost my train of thought. Mm -hmm. Let's look at you again. Oh, we were going to look at you in sitting. Let me have you sit up here again, please. So there is an asymmetry of the PSIS. Hmm. The left one is posterior and a little bit lower. You know, but again, you have good, good translation of movement through that joint. Mm -hmm. All right? So I think this is developmental. And you have good spring here, good spring here. And you have good spring through the lower right sacrum. And you have blocked motion here. Okay, so we could call this a torsion, but I think the pelvic asymmetry induces that. So now we have to look at your pelvis in sitting. So come sit in this chair, please. Bring your feet together. So what I see is that the right thigh is lower than the left. So if I cross my thumbs over, I override them. So this, this right one is about a quarter inch lower. Hmm. And then if I look at the length of the femurs, you're longer on the left femur. Yeah, and sometimes it feels that way. And sometimes, sometimes this is the same. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Interesting. It shifts. Okay. Alrighty. But I can't say that about the lower part. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put this craft foam that I buy at either Joanne's Craft Store or Hobby mm -hmm. Lobby or Michael's. This is a five millimeter and it's pretty dense. Doesn't give much. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put that under your right sit bone. Feet together. Much better. Much better. Mm -hmm. What does that feel like? It feels good. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. Um, yeah, and there was a while where I was wearing a lift in my right shoe and oh. sitting on this. Okay. But it, I feel like sometimes when I look in the mirror, it looks like the right side's lower, and sometimes when everything else feels like it's aligned, it looks even. Interesting. So I didn't know, you know, if there was other things happening to make that appear that way. Sure, or, sure. You know. So, uh, you know, the next time that I see you, maybe I'll see you on Monday or Tuesday, mm -hmm. you know, you'll have a few days of doing that, hugging the right knee to your outside of your right shoulder, uh -huh. and you'll be doing the self-treatment for the posterior. So if you can achieve balance of the pelvis, then, you'll, then you should come back balanced. Okay. Okay. But I'm skeptical. I think you have asymmetrical development. Hmm. That's my belief. Okay. So we'll find out. Um, the other thing that I do is I use this foam. This is one of those stress foams that you buy to squeeze, you know, to relieve stress. And we dip it in rubber so that it holds up long term. And I place this under the trochanter. Okay? So some people have developmental asymmetry of the hip. And then when they sit on this, I'll take this out. This under the trochanter helps. Okay? So bring your feet together. And then knees together. And I don't like that. Hmm. You know, now it does the opposite. Well, it mm -hmm. makes this higher. Yeah. Okay? And it makes it longer. Yep. So I just don't like that. But how do you feel when you sit on this? It feels good. Okay. Come and sit on the table again.
And then let's put this underneath you, under the sit bone. So you can cut those in half, and then you can keep one in the car and one at home. You know, by get two of them, then you have uh, one for work and mm -hmm. one extra. All right, so when you sit on that, your PSISs are now balanced. Mm. Your lower sacrum is now balanced, and I can spring and get motion through that. And I can lift up, you're no longer side bent. So I like that under your right sit bone. Mm. So I'll cut that in half for you. Okay. And then you get to experiment with that and then give me some feedback next week. Okay. All right. So what we have is a, a pregnancy seven months along uh, in a person who had two hip surgeries on the right, rebuilt the labrum, but still has symptoms with the hip, has SIJD. You feel like you have to adjust your SI on both sides, correct? Mm -hmm. And then you also hyperextend your lumbar spine and you get a, a little pop in there that eases some discomfort. Mm -hmm. um, and so you present with a left posterior ilium, which we corrected, and a relative anterior ilium, but the mobility was good on the right, and a relative torsion in sitting induced by the pelvic asymmetry. And so sitting on a five millimeter craft foam under the right sit bone helps that. And again, it's nice to have this data on treating someone who's pregnant because I just don't see that many pregnant folks. So I thank you. Mm -hmm. And hopefully this mm -hmm. will, uh, your husband can uh, help you with the uh, corrections or the self-treatment will help. Okay. And we'll, we'll know more when I see you next week. Thanks.